What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 wrestlers who returned to WWE, but the crowd gave zero Fs. It ain't nothing worse than a wrestler coming back to hear a crowd pop for them to only hear crickets. I don't even know how that feels. I don't think I ever want to know how that feels. That sounds awful. So we're gonna check out some of these moments. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. We're getting right into this video. Let's do the damn thing, man. One of the most exciting elements of being a wrestling fan is seeing a former WWE wrestler return to the company. Mm -hmm. If this return is known about in advance, then the build in anticipation to the return should receive a ton of buzz. And the subsequent arrival of the returning wrestler should receive a huge reaction. If the return is a complete surprise, WWE will usually rely heavily on the surprise pop as nobody saw the return coming and WWE simply hopes that the fans care enough about the wrestler in question to warrant a positive reaction. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there are those occasions where a former WWE star has returned to the company and received <laughs> little to no Everybody reaction the from the audience. What? These types of returns aren't common, but when they occur, they are notable for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 wrestlers who returned to WWE, but, but nobody, nobody cared. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and a non-wrestling channel. Incredible. Number 10, Chris Masters. Now, at one point in time during the ruthless aggression era in WWE, it looked like Chris Masters was on course to be WWE's next big thing. Unfortunately, Masters never met the expectations that WWE placed on him, and this combined with multiple failures of WWE's wellness policy resulted in mm. WWE releasing Masters in 2007. All hope wasn't lost though for Masters, however, as in the summer of 2009, they decided to give the masterpiece another chance by bringing him back to the company. Masters would make his return at a match against MVP on Raw, but there was just one issue. Nobody cared. Damn. Masters received virtually no pop whatsoever, and it was almost as if the crowd had no idea who he was. Damn. The Raw commentary team tried their best to present Masters as a big deal, but the crowd reaction simply wasn't reflecting the audible praise. Number 9. Jeez. Test in March of 2006, WWE reached an agreement Rest with Tess, Tess for him to return to the company after two years away. Their vision for Tess was that he's going to be a part of the revamped ECW brand. This was an interesting decision as whilst Tess certainly had his fans, bringing him back and placing him in the ECW brand was a questionable fit. They did the right things in terms of building up Tess's return. Vignettes would play in advance so the ECW audience knew he was coming, but sadly, when he eventually returned, nobody in the ECW audience could give a damn. Test had put on a ton of muscle, but this wasn't enough to attract interest. Yeah. The lack of pop Test received upon his return was disappointed, but it was a short-sighted decision on behalf of WWE as a former IC champion would have been better suited returning to either Raw or SmackDown. Number yeah. 8. Brian Christopher Too Cool was one of the most popular acts of the Attitude Era, mm -hmm. but when the group disbanded, all three members of the stable struggled with their respective solo careers. Too Cool member Grandmaster Sexay would have numerous returns, but they would all sadly fall flat. The most infamous of these took place in 2011 during the road to WrestleMania 27. During the highly criticized feud between Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole, Sexay using his real name Brian Christopher would take part in a segment of Raw. This was because Christopher was the real life son of Jerry Lawler, so it was believed it would make sense to use him in the storyline. Mm -hmm. But upon his entrance, not a single fan in attendance <laughs> reacted to his return. It was as if nobody in attendance remembered just how popular yeah. Too Cool were. Nah, Too Cool it was, was definitely super popular. It was unfortunate, but the popular. return was misplaced, distasteful, and did a disservice to the late, great Brian Christopher. Number 7. The British Bulldog In 1999, WWE made the decision to bring back the British Bulldog back to WWE. A colourful character such as the Bulldog in the Attitude Era was a unique fit to say the least, but WWE did attempt to tweak his presentation. Mm -hmm. Bulldog would begin to wear jeans and his theme would eventually be modified to having a contemporary feel. Bulldog made his return in a match against the Big Boss Man on SmackDown and WWE clearly expected Bulldog to receive a thunderous pop, but it was lukewarm at best. Damn. The audience were confused as to why the Bulldog was back and this was no doubt linked to Bulldog's disastrous WCW run that preceded uh... his return. This run was universally slammed by fans for being a complete waste of time, and Bulldog would even suffer a career-altering injury due to WCW's sheer negligence. Damn. In relation to his final run, it wasn't much better, as Bulldog's in-ring work had worsened and fans ultimately struggled to connect with his grittier persona. Number 6. Emma 
Emma had a mm. relatively decent inaugural run on WWE's main roster, and some fans were deeply saddened when she was released in October 2017. Emma was a great in-ring talent and seemed to have a good match with anyone in the women's locker room, which was something that all fans seemed to acknowledge. In 2022, Emma would return to the company after five years away. Triple H was the mastermind behind Emma's return, which yep. made sense as Emma was a key part of NXT when Triple H was booking the brand. She would return in a match against Ronda Rousey, but the lack of reaction to her return was a clear indication that fans had forgotten all about her. Yep. The SmackDown audience barely reacted and her return was heavily <laughs> oh, criticized on social media. To properly utilize Emma, she should have been built up as a return didn't really work as a surprise as yeah. fans were evidently expecting a talent of a bigger stature. Yeah, Number that's five, something you probably, you know, you would probably need to like do some vignettes or something like that. You know, just to have some people to actually really, you know, sink their teeth into the, oh, okay, she's coming back, you know. Jake the Snake Roberts. The return of Jake the Snake Roberts in 2014 was a huge deal. Roberts had finally defeated his personal demons, and as mm -hmm. a result, WWE were allowing Roberts to be a part of the WWE family once again. Roberts' return would come at the old school Raw event, and he would even make his return just as the Shield were about to trip powerbomb CM Punk. Upon Roberts' music hitting, the Shield looked stunned, but the audience were eerily quiet. The only time the audience remotely reacted was when Roberts placed oh, his yeah, trademark I'm snake onto the, the body of snake. Dean Ambrose. <laughs> It was a massive shame and a huge disservice to someone that deserved a ton of recognition and respect. Number 4. The Great Carly. Oh, brother. Although Carly's <laughs> in ring work wasn't exactly stellar, during his first WWE run, he did often receive great ovations from the crowd. However, upon his random one off return in WWE in 2017, mm -hmm. fans were completely over Carly's persona and had yeah. no desire to see him anywhere near a WWE ring. Carly would return at the Battleground pay-per-view, helping Jinder Mahal retain his oh, WWE brother, title in a Punjabi awful. prison match <laughs> against Randy Orton. The return was as confusing as Carly didn't even come out to his own theme song. Instead, he came out to Mahal's theme. Now, in his defense, if he actually came out to his trademark theme, then the reaction may have been more positive. Yeah. Number 3. Big Boss Man One of the standout talents in WWE throughout the 90s was the Big Boss Man. Bossman was known for being one of the best big men in the business, and some fans will argue that the Bossman is one of the greatest talents to never win a WWE title. Unfortunately, his return in 2001 fell completely flat. It's a debate as to whether this was due to crowds simply not caring, or <laughs> WWE presenting him in a wrong manner. Bossman would return in a high-profile way as he would attack Stone Cold Steve Austin, aligning with Booker T in the process. Whilst the idea of Bossman working with two main eventers was fantastic, the execution was poor, as Bossman and Booker had little chemistry, so it just felt disjointed as a result. This would end up being the Hall of Famer's final WWE run, but it didn't take away from his contributions to the world of pro wrestling, and his work continues to be celebrated to this very day. Number 2. Sid The 2012 return of Psycho Sid to WWE was a return that nobody that. saw coming. Sid would return to Raw to challenge Heath Slater during I, I, Slater's I feud with the legends of Raw right from here. the past. Despite WWE nailing the presentation and using Sid's iconic theme song, the crowd just didn't care, and it was apparent they didn't even know who he was. Damn. Fans on social media at the time were furious at the lack of respect the crowd showed for a former WWE champion, but it was just a different time period, and Sid hadn't been on Raw since 1997. Ooh. Although the crowd response was lackluster, it was great to see Sid back in the WWE ring, and since his 2012 appearance, fans have been campaigning to get Sid inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> this is funny. This is why people say wrestling fans is fickle. He was there. No one cared. But now he, they want him to be in their WWE Hall of Fame. This is why people, I understand the criticism of wrestling fans. We can be very, very, very fickle. We can. One minute, we we know sell you, we know cheer you. Next minute, we want you in the Hall of Fame. I get it. I get it. I understand wrestling fans and, and uh, the criticism that comes towards wrestling fans in the wrestling community. And number one. Christian. But the buzz surrounding Christian's inevitable 2009 return was unbelievable. Initial plans called mm -hmm. for Christian to be revealed as the one behind the mysterious attacks on Jeff Hardy. But when those creative plans leaked online, Vince McMahon outright cancelled them. 
McMahon then opted for Plan B for Christian, which was a lackluster return on WWBC show ECW. Yeah, yeah ECW this was a complete was a waste C-show. of Christian's yeah. talents, and McMahon, without question, made the wrong call. Mm-mm. He would return in a random spot on the show, interrupting the then ECW champion Jack Swagger. Who remembers and due that? The fans in attendance being half asleep. <laughs> Christian barely got a pop. To make things worse, Todd Grisham on commentary received extensive criticism for his underwhelming call of the return. Grisham would just simply declare. <laughs> It's Christian! It was in the most monotone manner possible. That it was a total up. disappointment. <laughs> have folks, 10 wrestlers who Imagine someone calling your return, surprise return. Oh, it's Christian. If it was Edge, he would have, holy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's Christian. And granted, ECW was the C show. Oh my God. They did ECW. Vince destroyed that show. It it didn't have any semblance of uh, the original ECW, mainly because they probably couldn't show that type of stuff. They couldn't show that type of stuff on television. What ECW was doing back in the 90s and the 2000s was... Probably they shouldn't have shown that type of stuff because they were just literally trying to murder each other. <laughs> so, um, yeah, debuting him on the C brand didn't really help his case commentary saying oh it's christian didn't really help his case it was just it was just a lot of things that just did not did not work for his return i mean who wants to return to the c brand like i don't know anybody that actually just wants to be a part of the lesser lesser brand of wwe in that return but comment down below let me know what return if it wasn't on this list where you was just like i (laughs) <laughs> like okay that's cool you're back awesome <laughs> let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k appreciate your quickie oh blah, blah 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 i fucked up the outro i gotta do it again <laughs> but i appreciate y'all <laughs> i don't even i can't do the outro i fucked it up road to 150k i'm out <laughs>